Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Wherever you are, our viewers, we greet you again in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We thank God for another opportunity, another moment to be in his presence. How lovely and how sweet it is to be in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I can see many people are now starting to call because we had gone beyond time. But we thank God because we have come to understand that many people are ready to receive from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, in our studios, my name is Pastor Mary Nyokonyo. Beside me, I have powerful and wonderful men of God ready to minister to all of us that we may hear the word of God and receive the mind of God. Praise the Lord. And I believe that you are ready as I am also ready to partake this wonderful word of God tonight. Hallelujah. Kwa hivyo na wakaribisha mara nyingine tena na kusema karibuni, karibuni, karibuni. Ni vyema kusikia kutoka kwa Bwana. Karibisha mtu, pigia mtu simu mwambie sasa tuko tayari kusikia. Karibisha mtu kwa mlango wako umwambie tutazame pamoja ili tuweze kubarikiwa. Usibarikiwe peke yako na kupatia nafasi ya kukaribisha mtu. Taga friend. Mwambie karibu tukaweze kufurahia ujumbe huu pamoja. We are God's battle axe, a weapon of war. Mimi na wewe ni chombo cha vita mikononi mwa Bwana. Na kama vile tulivyosungumza Jumapili iliyopita ya kwamba vita vyetu sio vya mwili, sio vya nyama na damu. Usiseme wewe ni chombo mikononi mwa Mungu na uende kuanza kupigana na wenzako. Hautakuwa chombo mikononi mwa Mungu. Maana chombo hakipigani kama mwenye chombo haja kishika. Utakuwa unatumia nguvu yako kama chombo. Kwa hivyo leo tumekuwa kwa maombi mahali hapa kuanzia asubuhi tumekuwa tukiomba pamoja na intercessor team yetu na tumekamilisha ndio maana tunataka sasa tuingie kwa maombi ya jumla pamoja na wewe hapo nyumbani. It's a very wonderful moment. We have been in the presence of God since morning and now again we are together live here at Nyokonyo Studios. Welcome, welcome. Tag a friend. I'm giving you more time to call on a friend, tag a friend so that we can continue together because I know the sermon of today is so powerful. You are God's battle axe. We are God's battle axe. A weapon of war. So we are ready that God may use us, not ourselves, but God to use us. Allow God to carry his purpose in you. Allow God to accomplish his will through you as God's weapon of war. Allow God to destroy his enemies because the Bible says God's enemies are your enemies. Allow God to fight his enemies through you. You are only but a weapon that God wants to use tonight. Wherever you are, I welcome you again. I know many people are joining us. Hallelujah. It is good. We are here to be used by God. Jesus. I'm giving myself away. I give myself away so you can use me, God. And I know that also you, you are giving yourself away for God to use you. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. We are giving ourselves to God. So that he may use us. Our lives are not our own. You do not own your life. I do not own my life. 
But today, I'm giving my life to the owner who is God, who is Jesus himself, that he may use me to fight his enemies. Because God wants to destroy the power of Satan. He cannot fight as him, but he wants to fight through us. Allow God to carry his purpose through you. Hallelujah. So back to our studios, I have, as I have said earlier, these are powerful and anointed men of God. And you know what anointing can do. Anointing breaks the yokes. So if there is any yoke in your life, if there is any band tying you, be ready that that yoke is going to break. Because with me, I have powerful men of God anointed, ready to give us the word of God tonight. Hallelujah. Welcome, my brothers. Welcome again to our studios. I'm happy to see you. Last week, we missed you a lot, but I thank God that today you are here. And I know that God has really empowered you purposely for today so that somebody can be used by God. Amen. Welcome. So they are going to tell us their names. And after we will give the man of God time to give us the word of God. Then thereafter, we will have time to pray together. Welcome, men of God. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity that God has given unto us. I'm Harrison Adair. I bless the Lord as I welcome all uh, for our service to be ready to hear from God. God bless you. Amen, amen. Karibu sana tena. Yule unatufutai pale nyumbani. My name is Johnston. Uh, nasema karibu sana. Tumekuja ili tukubariki na wewe wa baraka semu yetu. Unapo tufatilia pale nyumbani. Maine ulio keti sasa hivi unatufatilia. Tunasema buwana yesu wa kubariki sana. Mm -hmm. Na tunamini buwana kukutenda mema jioni ya leo. God bless you. Amen. I thank God because I can see people are watching. People are watching. I've told you, welcome a friend. Tag somebody. Tag a friend. You still have good time to tag a friend. I thank God because of Masi Akinye. We bless the Lord, Masi Akinye. Kaspin Oresi, my daughter, wherever you are, we bless the Lord. People are watching. Hallelujah. Gladys Chebet, you are saying, I am already woman of God. Thanks a lot. Tag a friend. Tag a friend, Gladys Chebet. Tell somebody, we thank God. I can see Maureen. Maureen, you have liked. I can see Maureen Acheng. Hilda Acheng, you are saying amen. Mulei Monika, you are saying amen. It is a wonderful opportunity for us to be in this platform. It is not in vain. I have received many testimonies. Many testimonies that people are healed. And I thank God. Hallelujah. I thank God because people are receiving healing. These, these prayers are not in vain. We are praying because we know that God is doing something. Praise the Lord. Not only behind the scene, I'm seeing real things happening. And I know that today, today is your day. Today is my day. We are all partakers today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can see people are really watching. People are watching. Tag a friend, tag a friend. People are watching as I usher in Pastor Harrison to give us the word of God. I know. I know. I can testify of this man of God. He is very anointed purposely because of this. That is why I want you to relax and receive. He is only but a weapon, ready to be used. Receive from God. Amen. You are going to receive from God. The man of God is here today so that you can receive from God. Pastor Harrison, I want to say thank you once more again for accepting our invitation to be here with us today and may God bless you so much because I know that you are going to be a blessing to many and many. I'm calling on unto this generation that this is a very powerful man of God, anointed purposely for this. Come, 
come all come and receive from the mind of God so I welcome you man of God I welcome you also you lead us in the word of prayer Amen. and now you give us the word welcome Amen. hallelujah let's pray father in Jesus name Baba kwa jina la Yesu. We thank you for who you are. Tukushukuru jinsi ulivyo. We bless you because you have been so wonderful. Tukubariki maana umekuwa ajabu. Your faithfulness endures forever. Uaminifu wako wadumu milele. You have never been defeated O Lord. Haujawahi shindwa e Mungu. Your power surpasses the powers of this world. Nguvu zako zazidi nguvu zote za dunia. Lord we surrender unto you now. Tujinyenyekesha na tujipeana kwako sasa. Have your way Holy Spirit. Pata nafasi ya Roho Mtakatifu. Fill your mind to your people. Fundua mawazo yako kwa watu wako. Unlock every closed door. Fungua malango zote zilizofungwa. Release the supernatural power. Achilia nguvu za kiungu za kipekee. That your people may overcome the battle before them. Ili watu wako washinde vita mbele zao. Lord we are only vessel before you. Bwana sisi ni vyombo tu mbele zako. Use us as you wish. Tumie kama vile upendavyo ili tukawasiliane neno hili Asante kwa kila mmoja naye tutasama sasa Bwana Neno hili lifanyike suluhu kwa maisha yake Asante kwa utakatifu wako Kwa jina la Yesu lokutwa omba Amen Amen Amen, Amen. I want to humble before the almighty God. Nataka kujinyenyekesha mbele za Bwana Mkuu. The one who has given to us this opportunity. Yule ametupatia tunuku hii. To be inside this studio so that we can share the word of God. Kwa ndani ya vituo hivi ili tukaweze shiriki neno la Mungu. God is faithful and always faithful to us. Mungu ni mwaminifu na kila mara mwaminifu kwetu. He has never failed. Hajawahi shindwa. So as we share this word today, hivyo tunaposhiriki neno hili leo, I believe the spirit of God will establish this truth in our hearts. Naamini uh, Roho Mtakatifu wa Mungu atahifadhi kwelu huu katika mioyo zetu. As our host pastor has said, kama vile mchungaji wetu amesema, he laid the foundation about this. Aliweka msingi kwa hii. That we we are the weapons in the hands of God. Kwamba sisi ni silaha tu mikononi pa Mungu. So God wants to use us for his own purpose in our generation. Ivo Mungu ataka tutumia kwa makusudi yake kwa sababu ya kisasi hiki. We are a generation. Sisi ni kisasi that has a purpose here on earth. Ambayo ipo na makusudi hapa duniani. So don't miss this. Kwa hivyo usipotese hii. The book of Jeremiah chapter number 51 mlango ule wa 51 then i'm reading from verse 20 tunasoma mstari wa 20 unto 23 hadi ule mstari wa 23 the bible says bila inasema the bible says bila inasema you are my war club and weapon of war You are my war club and weapons of war. Wewe ndio chombo cha vita zangu. I will smash nations with you and destroy kingdoms with you. Nitamaliza mataifa mbele yako na kuharibu silaha zote zilizoko kwako. I will smash nations with you. Nations mataifa and destroy kingdoms with you i will smash the horses and its rider with you nitamaliza farasi zote na wote waendesha farasi hizo mbele zako i will smash the chariots and its rider with you nitamaliza wote wanaoendesha hayo mafarasi i will smash man and women uh, woman with you nitamaliza wanaume na wanawake kwako i will smash old man and young boy with you nitawamaliza uh, vijana na wazee walio pande wako i will smash young man and young woman with you nitamaliza uh, yule wa kike mchanga na yule mkubwa i will smash the shepherd and his flock with you 
nitamaliza mchungaji na kondoo zake nawe i will smash the farmer and his team of oxen with you nitamaliza mkulima na 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 na, na, na pia uh, kundi lake lote i will smash governors and officials with you nitamaliza viongozi wote upande wako one of the things that i like is verse 24 before your eyes i will repay babylon all the inhabitants of chaldean Uh, for all the evil they did in Zion declares the Lord. Moja wapo ya maeneo ninayopenda sana ni ule mstari wa 24 ambao inasema nami nitamlipa Babeli na wote wakao ndani ya ukaldayo mabaya yao yote walio yatenda katika sayuni mbele ya macho yenu asema Bwana When Jeremiah was prophesizing and giving this prophecy Wakati Jeremiah alikuwa anatoa unabii na kupeana unabii huu It seems like uh, it will not come to happen Ilionekana ni kana kwamba haitakuja timia So God was speaking through Jeremiah Hivyo Mungu akanena pitia Jeremiah To encourage the children of Israel especially the house of Jacob Kuwatia wana wa Israeli moyo hasa nyumba ya Yakobo That God has a plan to restore you back to your city Ya kwamba Mungu yuko na mpango ya kuwarejesha tena katika mji Remember right now they were still uh, in captivity in Babylon. Kumbuka sasa hivi walikuwa wangalipo katika umateka pale Babylon. And God saw everything that was happening to them. Na Mungu akaona kila kitu kilichokuwa kinatendeka kwao. How Babylonians uh, destroyed uh, the temple of Jehovah. Kama vile Babyloni iliharibu uh, nyumba ya Bwana. And how they of, uh, oppressed the children of Israel in captivity. Na vile waliwanyanyaza wana wa Israeli katika uh, umateka. So the Lord is telling uh, Jeremiah to prophesy. Hivyo Bwana anamnenea Jeremiah nena unabii huu. That the time has come for the Lord to repay Babylon for what they did to his people. Ya kwamba muda umefika hasa Mungu kulipa Babyloni kwa kile ambacho waliofanya watu wake. He is going to repay them every evil thing they did against his people. Anakwenda kuwalipa kila jambo liofu walio fanya kwa watu wake. And so Jeremiah is prophesizing. Hivyo Jeremiah anatoa unabii hapa. By telling these people. Kwa kuambia watu hawa that you are the weapon in the hands of God. Ya kwamba enyi msila uwepo uh, mbele za Bwana. When I read this context I remember one thing. Naposoma taarifa hii nakumbuka kitu kimoja. That God was speaking to them to encourage them that he is going to use somebody to deliver them. Ya kwamba Mungu alikuwa na nena na wao akiwatia moyo kwamba anaenda kutumia mmoja wao So as you read from uh, chapter 50 unaposoma kuanzia mlango wa msini it expresses that the person the Lord is going to use here is King Cyrus uh, inaelezea kwamba mtu ambaye Mungu anakwenda mtumia hapa ni mfalme Cyrus When you read about the, the, that chapter the whole of uh, that chapter unaposoma mlango huo wote wa amsini it reveals a lot of things to us inapeana ufunuo mwingi kwetu sisi and so i want you to know ivo nataka ufahamu that the lord had prepared a person whom he will use ya kwamba bwana alikuwa tayari amemuandaa mtu atakayemtumia as a weapon in his hand kama silaha mikononi mwake to deliver the children of israel from babylon kuwakomboa wana wa israeli toka babiloni our god is god of war mungu wetu ni mungu wa vita he has fought a lot of battle amepigana vita vilivyo vingi and won the battle na kuvishinda vita when i read about this naposoma kuhusu hii he was telling these people akawa anawaambia watu hawa to remember that he is a great god wakumbuke kwamba yeye ni mungu aliyemkuu he is a great god yeye ni mungu mkuu and so he wants them to understand na hivyo anataka wapate ufahamu that he made the earth by his power ya kwamba aliumba dunia kwa nguvu zake he wants them to know that he is powerful anawataka watu hao wajue kwamba yeye ni mwenye nguvu he establish the world aliweza kutengeneza kuumba dunia by his wisdom kwa hekima zake and by his understanding he spread the heavens na kwa kwa, kwa, kwa ufahamu wake akaziweka mbingu god is full of wisdom mungu ni mwingi wa hekima he understands everything 
anafahamu kila kitu when his voice sounds wakati sauti yake inashikika there is thunder from the water of heaven basi kuna kuwa na tetemeko katika mbingu what is he insinuating here je anamaanisha nini hapa he's trying to show you how god is mighty and powerful anajaribu kukuonesha kama vile mungu alivyo mkuu na mwenye nguvu we worship the lord that is great tunamwabudu mungu aliye mkuu the god who created heaven and earth mungu aliyeumba mbingu na na, na dunia there is nothing that can stand before him and overcome hapana kitu kinaweza simama mbele zake na kikaweza kushinda his knowledge is far beyond the things of this world ushara yake ni zaidi ya vitu za hapa duniani so he for I saw how he's going to use Cyrus as the king of Persia to destroy Babylon. Akatangulia kuona kama vile atamtumia Cyrus mfalme wa Persia ili aharibu Babyloni yote. To bring justice to his people. Kuleta haki kwa watu wake. To bring judgment he's going to become an instrument of judgment upon these people. Akuleta hukumu anaenda kutumika kama chombo cha hukumu kwa watu hawa. Babylon with full of their pride. Babil- praises Babyloni watu waliokuwa wamejaa wana kiburi na zile sifa They never knew that this will happen Ah wa, wa kujua kwamba hii itafanyika They kept on boasting after even Jeremiah had prophesied Walishinda kujawa na, jif, na majifuno hata baada ya unabii kutoka kwa Jeremiah But the plans of God cannot fail Lakini mipango za Mungu haziwezi shindwa His yes is yes Ah ndio yake ni ndio And his no is no Na hapana yake ni hapana If you are listening to this message Kama unanisikiza na unafuata ujumbe huu You are the weapon in the hands of God Wewe ni silaha mikononi pa Mungu When a weapon is in the hand of a warrior Silaha inapokaa mikononi pa wale walio katika mawindo It is under the prerogative of a warrior to direct it where it has to go Basi ni yule mwenye vita kuielekeza silaha hii mahali anapotaka yeye He directs the arrow where it's supposed to go anaelekeza mshale anakotaka iende and where he sends that arrow there is a target na pale anakoelekeza ule mshale basi pana lengo so there when we read basi pale tunaposoma jeremiah is referring us as an axe jeremiah anatuelekeza sisi kama shoka an axe is a metal ah basi shoka ni chombo that is made ambayo imetengenezwa by beating kwa kugongwa and it goes through the fire na inapitia moto so that it can become fine and helpful to the user ili kaweze fanyika bora na yenye umuhimu kwa mwenye kutumia and you realize that when the axe na unatambua wakati shoka is sharp inakuwa na makali it makes the use it gives the user an easiest time of uh, do, uh, doing his work inamfanya yule anayetumia shoka ile kufanya kazi yake kwa urahisi so when the bible says that we are the weapon na, na biblia inaposema sisi ni silaha we are the weapon of war sisi ni silaha za vita he's telling you that our life is full of battle anakueleza kwamba maisha yetu imejawa na vita Every believer must understand that we are living in the dispensation of spiritual warfare. Akila muumini anapaswa kufahamu kwamba tunaishi katika nyakati za vita. So that when you understand that, ili unapopata ufahamu ya hiyo, you need to prepare yourself. Unahitaji kujiandaa mwenyewe so that you can be used by God. Ili uweze tumika na Mungu. I read about this. Nalisoma kuhusu hii. Isaiah chapter the number 45 Isaiah mlango wa 45 and i saw how god elected cyrus na nikaona kama vile mungu alimteua cyrus and anointed cyrus to deliver his people from the uh, from babylon na kamtia cyrus mafuta ili awakomboe watu wake toka katika babylon to bring them to uh, to their land awarejeshe katika nchi yao they were oppressed with this kingdom of babylon walikuwa finyiliwa na kuganda 
Kanisa na ufalme huu wa Babylon. But God is going to use Cyrus as a weapon in his hand. Na Mungu anakwenda mtumie Cyrus kama silaha mikononi mwake. To fight with the Babylon. Kupigana na Babylon and win the battle. Na kushinda vita. And then restore his people back to Jerusalem. Na kisha kurejesha watu wake waje katika mji wa Babylon. So that they can go and rebuild the temple. Ili wakaweze kuenda kuijenga hekalu tena. He anointed Cyrus purposely for that work. Alimtia Cyrus mafuta kwa makusudi ya kazi hiyo. Today God has anointed so many people. Leo hii Mungu amewatia watu wengi mafuta. Men and women are anointed for a specific assignment. Wanawake na wanaume wametiwa mafuta kwa kazi muhimu na kazi makususi. The anointing upon you is not of boasting. Mafuta iliyo juu yako si ya majifuno. The anointing upon you is not about competing with another person. Mafuta iliyo ndani yako si ya kushindana na wengine. The anointing upon you is not of bringing conflict upon the body of Christ. Mafuta iliyo ndani yako si ya kuleta magomvi kwa mwili wa Kristo Yesu. He's telling Cyrus. Anamwambia Cyrus hapa. I have anointed you so that you can deliver my people. Nimekutia mafuta ili wakombee watu wangu. So it is the anointing of God that bringeth deliverance to the people who are in captivity. Hallelujah. Kwa hivyo ni mafuta ya Mungu ndio ina inaleta ukombozi kwa watu wa Mungu walio katika umateka. It is that anointing that broke the yoke that was upon these people that were being oppressed by Babylonians. Ni hiyo mafuta ndio ilivuncha nira ambayo ilikuwa juu ya watu hawa waliokuwa wamefinyiliwa katika nchi ya Babylonia. And I know today the anointing of God is going to break the yoke upon your shoulder. Na ninajua leo mafuta inaenda kuvunja nira iliyowekwa katika shingo lako. The yoke of oppression. Ah, lile nira ya ya ya, ya kufinyiliwa. The yoke of captivity. Nira ya umateka. The yoke of frustration. Nira ya kunyanyaswa. Because God is available. Maana Mungu anapatikana. And is going to use us. Na anakwenda kututumia. As he used Cyrus. Kama vile alimtumia Cyrus. To deliver his people. Awakomboe watu wake. Deliverance is coming. Ukombozi unakuja mpendwa. Deliverance from that sickness. Ukombozi kutoka kwa magonjwa haya. Deliverance from that poverty. Ukombozi kutoka kwa umaskini huo. Deliverance from that rejection. Ukombozi kutoka katika kule kukataliwa. Deliverance from that situation you are in. Ukombozi kutoka kwa hiyo hali skillful in using the sling mwanaume aliyekuwa na ujuzi wa kutumia chombo when he went before the king alipoenda mbele za za mfalme he requested the king if he can give him an opportunity to fight goliath akaulisa ruhusa kama mfalme aweza muruhusu kupigana na goliath his own brother were doubting him ndugu zake wenyewe wakamshuku yeye even the king was not sure about david naye mfalme hakuwa na uhakika na Daudi but god had prepared david o mungu ni nani akawa amemtayarisha daudi by fighting a bear kwa kupigana na mwanaume huyu a bear dubu a, kwa kupigana na dubu by fighting a lion na kupigana na simba god was preparing david mungu alikuwa anamtayarisha daudi for the task that was ahead of kwa him kwa kazi iliyokuwa mbele yake the challenges you are going through now ngamoto unazopitia sasa are preparing you for the battle that is ahead of you. The building confidence inside you. So that when you will encounter the forces that are ahead of you. You will say as David said. The Lord who was with me when I was fighting the lion. The Lord who was with me when I was I was fighting a bear. He's the same God with me today. Who is this uncircumcised man? Mocking the God of Israel. David was a weapon in the hand of God. Who destroyed Goliath? A person that brought threat to the nation of Israel. Israel. We have people 
people in the Bible. Tuko na watu kwa Biblia. The people that God used in his hand as weapon. Watu waliotumia Mungu mikononi mwake kama silaha. He tells Jeremiah. Anamwambia Jeremiah, I have made you a prophet of nations. Nimekufanya nabii wa mataifa. I have given you power to uproot. Nimekupa nguvu kungoa. To destroy. Kuharibu. And to build again. Na kujenga tena. Because he was a weapon. Maana alikuwa silaha. When a weapon is in the hand of a warrior. Wakati uh, silaha ipo mikononi pa mtu wa vita. It is the warrior who knows how to use it. Basi ni mwenye vita ndiye ana ufahamu wa kukitumia. And that is why he's telling Jeremiah. Na ndio sababu anamnenea Jeremiah. Tell these people that you are the weapon in my hand. Waambie watu hawa kwamba wewe ni chombo tu mikononi mwangu. Every believer is a weapon. Kila muumini ni ni, ni silaha. Because we live in the world that is full of war. Maana tunaishi kwa dunia ambayo imejawa vita. The demon is fighting the body of Christ. Ah, uh, shetani anapigana na mwili wa Kristo. The demons are fighting the servants of God. Mapepo yanapigana na watumishi wa Mungu. But God is preparing weapons. Lakini Mungu anatayarisha silaha. That are going to withstand the furies of this world. Ambaye inaenda kustahimili vitisho vya dunia hii. That the people that are going to oppose the works of the enemy. Ndio watu watakaoenda kupinga kazi za adui. And we have been anointed. Na tumetiwa mafuta. To destroy the works of the devil. Kuharibu kazi za shetani. Bible says. Biblia inasema. The son of man was manifested. Mwana wa Adamu akadhihirishwa. On earth here. Hapa duniani. In person of Christ. Kwa mfano wa Kristo. To destroy the works of the enemy. Ili aharibu kazi za adui. When Jesus was ascending. Yesu alipokuwa na paa kwenda mbinguni. He made a promise to his disciples. Akapeana hadi kwa wanafunzi wake. And he told them. Akawaambia, greater works. Ah, kazi zilizo kuu. You are going to do. Waenda mwaenda kuzifanya. Than what I have done. Kuliko kile ambacho nimefanya. Greater works. Kazi nguku. You are going to do. Mnaenda kuzifanya. He said you are going to do more than what I have done. Alisema mpendwa utafanya zaidi ya vile alivyofanya yeye. And John in his writing. Na Yohana kwa maandiko yake. He says. Anasema that when we believe the son of God. Kwamba tunapomwaminia mwana all these signs and wonders shall follow us. I am a weapon in the hand of God. God cannot come from heaven to do his will here. In every generation, he always based on special people. You and me are special people in the hands of God. In every generation. When God saw the children of Israel suffering. In the book of Exodus. He decided to send Moses. Akafanya maamuzi ya kumtuma and he said i have seen the cry of my people so god appeared to moses and gave moses the assignment moses was a weapon in the hand of god to destroy the works of pharaoh when moses died the Lord appeared and gave assignment to Joshua the son of Nun. Mungu anaonekana na kupeana kazi kwa Joshua mwana wa Nun. Because he saw the heart of Joshua to be faithful and he was going to use him to take the children of Israel to the promised land. Maana anaona moyo wa Joshua ukiwa mwaminifu na anaenda kumtumia kuwapeleka wana wa Israeli hadi kwa inchi ya agano. In every generation. Katika kila kisasi God has to use somebody. Mungu anawe, anatumia mtu. We are living in the generation of dispensation that is called the church. Ah tunaishi kwa nyakati ya kisasi kinachojiita kanisa. We are the 
church age now. Sisi ni kisasi cha kanisa sasa. The Holy Spirit of God has anointed the church. Uh, Roho Mtakatifu wa Mungu ametia mafuta kanisa. That is why when Jesus was descending. Na ndio sababu Yesu alipokuwa napa. He said I will not leave you as orphans again. Akasema sitawaacheni kama yatima tena. But I'm going to ask my father. Lakini nakwenda kumuuliza baba yangu. And he's going to send to you another helper. Na nakwenda kukutumia msaidizi mwingine. When he comes, na anapokuja msaidizi, he will remind you of all things I've spoken while I'm with you. Atawakumbusheni maneno yote nilionena nalipokuwa pamoja nanyi. And so Acts chapter number 2. Kwa hivyo matendo ya mitume mlango ule wa pili. When we read about that book, tunaposoma kuhusu kitabu kile, we discover that when the spirit of God came upon the disciples. Tunatambua kwamba wakati roho wa Mungu alipotua juu ya wanafunzi wake. And anointed them by power. Na kuwatia mafuta kwa nguvu. They began speaking in tongues. Wakaanza kunena kwa ndimi. And they began healing the sick. Na wakaanza kuwaponya wagonjwa. Proclaiming the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus with boldness. Wakitangaza kukufa kufufuka kwa Yesu Kristo na ule ujasiri. They became the weapon of God. Wakafanyika silaha ya Mungu. They destroyed the work of witchcraft and sorcerers. Au waliharibu kazi ya wachawi na waganga. They preached everywhere. Wakahubiri kila mahali. Because the anointing was full upon them. Maana upako ulikuwa umejaa juu yao. They were the weapon in the hands of God. Walikuwa ni silaha mikononi pa Mungu. For the special assignment. Kwa kazi ya kipekee. And when they went outside there. Na walipoenda pale nje mpendwa. The Lord used them mightily. Bwana akawatumia pakubwa. The people were saved. Watu wakaokoka. The sick people were healed. Wagonjwa wakapona. Miracles were happening. Miu Jesus ikafanyika. The shadow of the apostle touched the people and they were healed. Kifuni cha mitume ikaguza wagonjwa na wanapona. Because they were weapon in the hands of God. Maana walikubali kuwa silaha mikononi pa Mungu. Jeremiah is saying. Jeremiah ananakili. The Lord who made heavens. Bwana aliyefanya mbingu. The one who is powerful and mighty. Yeye aliye mwenye nguvu na mkuu. He is going to deliver you. Anakwenda kuwakomboa ninyi. He is going to use a weapon in his hand. Anakwenda kutumia silaha mkononi mwake. To destroy Babylon. Kuharibu Babylon. Who is your Babylon today? Babylon wako ni nani leo? What is your ba ba Babylon in your life? Babylon ni nani kwa maisha yako? What is this spirit that is oppressing you? Ni roho ipi hii ambayo inakuganda mimi na kumaliza? What is this spirit that has taken captive of your life? Ni roho yupi huyu ameweka maisha yako kwenye umateka? Taken captive of your finances. Ameweka umateka fedha zako. Taken captive of your your, your children. Ameweka umateka watoto wako. The Lord is saying. Bwana anasema you are a weapon wewe ni silaha and is going to use you anakwenda kutumia wewe to deliver his people kukomboa watu wake no matter where they are haijalishi waliko wao no matter how long it has taken haijalishi imechukua muda ulioupi i am ready to be used by god tayari mimi hapa kutumika na mungu just allow god to use you ruhusu tu bwana kutumie he may not use your neighbor anaweza kosa kutumia churani yako he's waiting for you to understand Angoja wewe upate ufahamu that you are the right weapon kwamba wewe ndiye silaha bora in the hands of God mikononi pa Mungu and so God is ready na hivyo Mungu yu tayari to use you kukutumia wewe in his hand mikononi mwake to smash nations akamalize mataifa to destroy altars aharibu madhabahu the altars of forests madhabahu ya kule jangwani the altars of the sea ah madhabahu ya kule kwenye mito the altars of the wilderness ah madhabahu ya kule kwenye jangwa the altars that are oppressing the people of god madhabahu yanayowagandamiza watu wa mungu god is going to use you as an instrument of destruction mungu anakwenda kukutumia kama chombo cha uharibifu to destroy kuharibu the works of the devil kazi ya adu 
lot that is happening kuna mengi yanafanyika satan has released a lot of weapon and warfare shetani ameachilia asilaha zilizo mingi na vita vingi but listen to me somebody lakini nisikize mtu The Lord was telling James Bwana akawa anamwambia Yakobo to write about this anakili kuhusu haya that for us to resist the devil kwamba ili sisi tukaweze kumpinga adui we must first be submissive ni lazima mwanzo tuwe uanyenyekevu watifu because when we submit unto god maana tunapojinyenyekesha kwa bwana he's going to give us the power anakwenda kutupatia nguvu so many people are trying to resist the devil watu wengi sana wanajaribu kupinga shetani by their own strength kwa nguvu zao pekee by their intellectual na ufahamu wao they cannot conquer the devil hauwezi mshinda shetani but it is god in us who is able to conquer the devil lakini mungu ndani yetu ndiye ana uwezo kushinda shetani and so he says na hivyo anasema submit therefore unto the lord jinyenyekesheni kwa bwana and you will resist the devil na mtapinga and adui. he will flee away from you Nae atawatoroka so the first thing for you to do is to re, uh, to humble ah jambo la kwanza unalopaswa kufanya mpendwa ni kunyenyekea understand who you are fahamu wewe ni nani know that you are anointed jifahamu kwamba una upako umepakwa you are not an ordinary person wewe si mtu wa kawaida when the anointing of god comes upon you wakati mafuta ya mungu yanakuja juu yako it makes you to become an extraordinary person inakufanya kuwa mtu sio wa kawaida to do extraordinary things kufanya kazi sio ya kikawaida so that you can bring the glory to the name of god ili ukalete utukufu kwa jina la mungu and that is why when we read na ndio sababu tunaposoma we realize that the lord struck babylon ah tunatambua kwamba bwana aligonga babylon and destroyed everything in babylon na kaharibu kila kitu babylon and delivered his people back to jerusalem na kawakomboa watu wake kurejea yerusalemu to rebuild the temple kulijenga hekalu tena everything that was taken away kila kitu kilichokuwa kimenyakuliwa the lord restore it in your life bwana kurejesha kwa maisha yako everything that was snatched away kila kitu kilichochukuliwa the lord restore it back bwana kurejeshe God is bringing Cyrus in your life. Bwana analeta Cyrus maisha ni mwako. A deliverer. Amkombozi. The person he has prepared to help you. Mtu ambaye ametayarishwa kukusaidia. The person that will stand together with you in that situation. Mtu atakayesimama pamoja na wewe kwa hali hiyo. To make sure that you come out of that condition. Kuhakikisha kwamba unatoka kwenye hiyo hali. God always use people. Bwana kila mara utumia watu. When I read about Cyrus. Ninaposoma kuhusu Cyrus. Cyrus was not a Jew. Cyrus hakuwa Kohani. But God a Jewish. Hakuwa Muyahudi. But God decided to use him. Naye Mungu anafanya maamuzi ya kumtumia. The things that God used at times. Vitu ambavyo Mungu wakati mwingine huvitumia. It can surprise you. Yaweza kukuweka kwa mshangao. But he uses things that are despised. Wakati mwingine anatumia vitu vilivyotarahuliwa. To shame the strong men. Kuwa bisha wanaume wenye nguvu he can decide to use you anaweza fanya maamuzi ya kukutumia to do great things kufanya mambo makubwa that you have never even thought about ambayo hujawahi fikiria katika maisha yako he decided to use cyrus alifanya maamuzi kumtumia cyrus god has used people mungu amewatumia watu in different ways katika njia tofauti may the lord use people wacha na bwana tumie watu to take you to another level wakupeleke viwango vingine may the lord use somebody wacha mungu atumie mtu to make you achieve your dream akufanye kufikia ndoto yako may the lord use somebody wacha mungu amtumie mtu to hold your hand ashike mkono wako and take you to another level na kupeleke viwango vingine don't despise people usi darau watu because at times the person you are despising maana wakati mwingine mtu unayemdunisha is the one who have been sent in your life ndiye yule ametumwa kwa maisha yako to come and hold your hand aje kushike mkono and take you to where you belong na kufikisha unakopaswa wewe never despise people usiwai darau mtu because god has prepared each and every person maana mungu 
ametayarisha kila mmoja if he can use Cyrus kama anaweza mtumia mtu kama Cyrus hapa to do his will afanye mapenzi ya Mungu what of you je na wewe mpendwa he can do it more aweza fanya zaidi he can do it greater anaweza fanya zaidi because you are a child of god ana wewe ni mwana wa Mungu and you have known the will of god na umefahamu mapenzi ya Mungu god uses people Mungu hutumia watu as his weapon kama silaha zake and so today na hivyo leo i want to tell you this nataka kukwambia hii this is the moment huo wakati to understand kufahamu that you are a weapon kwamba wewe ni silaha the lord is waiting for you to understand that bwana ngoja sana wewe upate ufahamu huo so that he can use you. ili aweze kukutumia the lord used elijah bwana alimtumia elijah to destroy the worship of baal kuharibu maabudu ya baal he was just a man alikuwa tu mwanamume but by the words of his mouth lakini kwa maneno ya kinywa chake he decided to shut up the heavens and there was no rain alifunga mbingu na pakakosa maji kwa this is man who spoken words and it came to happen hawa ni wanadamu wanaume walizungumza maneno yakaja kutimia you are more than them wewe ni zaidi yao because you have the grace of god and the holy spirit of god in you maana uko na roho mtakatifu wa mungu na pia neema ya mungu juu yako and so god is ready to use you na hivyo mungu tayari kukutumia as a weapon kama silaha the people are suffering outside there watu wanateseka pale nje mtu wa mungu the people are suffering in your community watu wanateseka katika jamii yako the people are in bondage inside your church watu wapo katika umateka kanisa sani mwako they are seeking for solutions wanatafuta suluhu ya maisha you are the weapon of god wewe ni silaha ya mungu to give them the solution kuwapatia suluhisho god has prepared you bwana amekutayarisha for that special assignment kwa sababu ya kasi hiyo he has anointed you amekupaka mafuta so that you ca- he can use you ili akutumie to fulfill his purpose. Kutimiza malengo na makusudi yake. And so God bless you so much. Na hivyo Bwana kubariki sana. As we now enter to another segment. Tunapoingia katika kipengee kingine. Of prayer. Ya maombezi. And listening from what people are now speaking about this. Na pia kusikiza kile ambacho watu wanasema kuhusu haya. This is going to be very powerful. Hii inakwenda kuwa yenye nguvu. Because I'm willing to be used by God to say Let somebody free. Maana napenda sana tumika na Mungu leo kumweka mtu huru. And somebody is going to be delivered in the name of Jesus. Na bila shaka mtu anaenda kukombolewa kwa jina la Yesu. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. It is really so powerful. Hallelujah. I believe God that you are blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed of God. Praise the Lord. People are talking. People are speaking here. I can see and I can hear people talking and saying I can hear I can see Sister Snyder Quento all the way from Nakuru. She saying amen. God is so powerful and mighty. Hallelujah. Pastor Jerry Ohengo all the way from Gidurai. He's saying Thanks pastor Mary God bless you hallelujah we bless the lord we bless the lord Namhula Cherry anasema ya kwamba amen dear sister pray for me nilipoteza baba Mungu akapate kufariji dada yetu tuko hapa kwa ajili yako our own sister Christabel Nyagwala anasema may god my god is a battle axe and May his axe uproot and cut down and destroy every evil grown weeds in my life in Jesus mighty name. Thanks a lot our sister Christabel that is our own. Hallelujah. Sister Betlay Tamboka all the way from Umoja she's saying so powerful Gladys Tebeta I am ready woman of God I know Tebet is ready to be used by God as God's battle axe. Hallelujah. Wangare is tuned in Kasfin amen Lucy Masaba I'm ready to be used many people here are talking Mary Goretti you're saying use me oh lord hallelujah I know you are ready to be used hallelujah hallelujah Annex Juma is saying amen amen niombeeni please niko na kesi kotini hiyo kesi is settled 
Praise the Lord. That case is settled in Jesus' name. Because we know the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And I believe that one day the man of God is coming here to teach us about the power in the name. Amen. For you to understand the all names of Jesus, they have power. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mom Leah from UK, London, you're saying we have a great God. Indeed, we have a great God. Our sister Candice, you're saying I'm ready. All the way from Ruaka, I'm ready to be used by God. Oh, God, use me. He's going to use you. People are talking here, Pastor. And Faith Queen has a message for you. He's saying, Pastor Harrison, keep the fire burning. Hallelujah. Thanks a lot, our sister, Faith Queen. We are keeping the fire burning here. Hallelujah. We are not going to give the enemy even a single chance to win in your life. You need to take your position as a servant of God wherever you are. May God use you to lose your family. May God use you in that church. May God use you in that organization. May God use you wherever you are. God is going to use you. Mungu anaenda kukutumia haijalishi kiwango kile ambacho uko nacho and that is what i wanted to ask the man of god again also to clarify to us you know sometimes men man of god people fear and say oh you know i'm not anointed i have pastor above me and yet god has put something inside you people have god have put something inside somebody you might be a counselor even to advise somebody to overcome that situation. But you fear and say, oh, I don't have that anointing. I don't have that power. Today, the man of God is here to help you, to sharpen you so that you can be used by God. So, man of God, back to you. To somebody like a brother or a sister, wherever they are, asking and arguing in, in themselves that how am I going to overcome this. You have a great argument in you. How am I going to help my family overcome this? How am I going to help my neighbors overcome this? My children, my own house. How am I going to help them? How can I understand that I'm God's battle axe? Perhaps we think there are just pastors, deacons, elders of the church that are God's battle axe. Am I also God's battle axe? Just a mere member in my church. Every person that uh -huh. God created. Yes. God created us in a unique and a special way. Uh -huh. For a special assignment. When you read the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. He says we are the workmanship of God. The workmanship. Kazi ya mikono ya. The workmanship of God. Made in him for a special work ambao wametengenezwa naye kwa kazi ya kipekee and i think i need to read that book na nafikiri nahitaji kusoma kitabu hicho because it is very powerful maana ni yenye nguvu it tells me a lot about who i am inanieleza zaidi ya jinsi mimi nilivyo he says anasema for we are god's masterpiece Ah uh, maana sisi ni watu wa Mungu wenye amani created in Messiah Jesus to perform good actions ambao tumeumbwa katika Kristo Yesu kutenda kazi njema and, and listen to this now asikiza hii sasa that God prepared long ago to be our way of life ambayo Mungu <laughs> alitayarisha alitari, kitambo sana kama njia yetu ya uzima so for you you were in the mind of God before you were born kwako we we ulikuwa kwa mawazo ya Mungu mwanzo kabla uzaliwe so being born here on earth is to fulfill the assignment that God had for you 
as a person long time ago. Kwa hivyo wewe kuzaliwa hapa duniani ilikuwa tu ni dhihirisho kutimiliza kile Mungu alikuzudia kabla usaliwe. Good action that God prepared long time ago. Matendo mema ama mazuri ambayo Mungu alitayarisha kitambo mno. In my language we say even if an asaya huanisia <laughs> things that god made before time a vitu alizotengeneza mungu alizofanya mungu kabla ya wakati so god had an assignment before you were born mungu alikuwa na kazi na wewe kabla uzaliwe he's telling jeremiah i knew you before you were conceived ah anasema jeremiah nalikufahamu kabla mamako ashike mimba yako so The person the person who has asked this question. Kwa hivyo mtu ambaye ameuliza swali hii. I want to tell you that you have an assignment. Kwa hivyo nataka nikuhakikishie uko na kazi mbele yako. Whether it's sweeping, iwe ni kupanguza kanisa, whether it's encouraging somebody, iwe ni kumtia mtu moyo, whether it's clapping hands, iwe ni kupiga tu makofi kanisani, whether it's dancing in church, iwe ni kukula tu dance kanisani. You are fulfilling God's purpose. Watimiza makusudi ya Mungu. And wherever you are na popote ulipo mtu wa Mungu so happy when you discover who you are Mungu anafuraha sana unapojitambua wewe ni nani Thank you very much Amina Amina I wish I could be that karamojo I don't know if they are karamojo so <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Ningerudia vile amesema e bindu oh I'm sorry I can't say that in my language sijui nitasema namna gani Hey yawa Hey wacha tufikie pale. Kwa hivyo najua ya kwamba naona watu wanatutizama. I'm seeing people are watching. People are really pastor determined to be used by God. And I know that vile ambavyo sisi tuko tunawajibika kwa kutumika na Mungu. Naye Mungu anasema ya kwamba move near to me as I move nigh to you. Yes, wakati ambapo unachukua hiyo hatua ya kusonga, vile tu mtumishi wa Mungu amesema ya kwamba haijalishi ni kazi gani unafanya. Na sio kanisani peke yake mtumishi wa Mungu. I believe so. Not only in the church. Even in that company. Whatever you are doing. You represent the power of God. It is there. Hallelujah. We are God's representatives. We are ambassadors of Christ to perform the will of God. So wherever you are do not just stay in the church I'm just a mere member even in that organization in your house wherever God has located you wherever God has allocated you there may you accomplish the will of God Praise the Lord people are watching and people are really blessed Wilson Omondi was saying hallelujah glory to God Lin Wabwire I don't know if that language is yours now I think you had it. You say amen. God is faithful. Mubarikiwe sana. Wa mtumaini yao Mungu. Nilam Isa, all the way from Voi, my sister, my beloved sister, you are saying amen. May God bless you. Javan Mgenji, you are saying more fire. Here fire it is burning. It is burning indeed, my brother. And I know that people are getting blessed because I can see many people watching. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. If you have any question you can post it so that we ask the man of God uridhike ya kwamba wewe ni chombo. Na ufurahie pia kutumika kama chombo. Maana sio vizuri watu wengi many people have been used and they are not happy. Wametumika. Aswa kuna wakati. Hii ni siseme ni mtu, ni mimi. Nilikuwa natumika wakati ambapo sikuwa nimeolewa. Tungeenda crusade. Na gari ingeharibika njiani. Na tungeanza kuongea hata na kulalamika ya kwamba tunatumika na hata hatujui e, ndoa zetu zitakuwa namna gani. Tulikuwa tunalalamika but I have come to see the fruits of God. Ya kwamba Mungu kweli aliona nikalalamika kwa ajili ya ndoa na akanipatia ndoa ambayo ninafurahia sana. Kwa hivyo mchungaji kuna watu wengi wala ambao wanalalamika. Mtu ananungunika anatumika church na unaelewa kama sahisi. Asua kama upande sasa wa kucheza vyombo ama wacheza vyombo ama waimbaji. Wengi wao huwa wanataka ya kwamba wanapofanya kazi hiyo labda walipwe. Na unapata ya kwamba labda mtu wako kanisani na kanisa halina uwezo 
wa kukulipa kwa hivyo unakaa ukiona kwamba mimi ni chombo natumika lakini sina faida mtu kama huyu mtumishi wa Mungu anafaa aangalie wapi ndipo awe na faida aone ya kwamba kuna faida katika kutumika because the bible says Jacob shall not serve me in vain na kweli unapokutana nao wanakuambia maandiko mama the bible says Jacob shall not or will not serve me in vain how this person how is this person going to benefit from the service of god being a weapon is there any benefit for me being a weapon okay one of the things that i want to say is this moja wapo ya vitu ninataka kusema ni hii when we go to church to serve god tunapokwenda kanisani kumtumikia mungu one of the things that you need to know that we are serving the god who is able moja wapo ya vitu nataka ufahamu kwamba tunamtumikia Mungu aliye na uweza but you don't prioritize your need na uwezi pia tanguliza hitaji zako but you prioritize god unamtanguliza Mungu when you serve god wholeheartedly <laughs> unapomtumikia Mungu na moyo wako wote wholeheartedly umejitoa na moyo wako wote and you are faithful to the service that you are giving na uaminifu na ule huduma unaopeana kwa Mungu. God is going to release the things that you need. Huyu tu Mungu unayemtumikia anakwenda kuachilia vitu vyote unavyohitaji. He said seek ye the kingdom of God first. Anatuambia tafuta kwanza falme wa Mungu. And all these things you need in life shall just be added. Na haya mengine yote yatasidishiwa. So I've seen people who mama and complain because they are not given money i call them hireling servants nimeona watu wanaolalamika kwa sababu hawajapewa pesa ninawaita hao watu wanaokuja kulipwa hireling servants they are people who serve god because of their own personal interest hawa ni aina ya watu wanaomtumikia mungu kulingana na matamanio ya mioyo jesus said freely you, you are given freely give ah uh, yesu anasema hapa kwamba mumepewa bure na hivyo peaneni bure So when you serve God Mungu, and remain faithful na kusalia mwaminifu as the Lord uh, lift the church up kama vile Mungu analiinua lile kanisa and blesses the church na kulibariki hilo kanisa you will be part of that blessing basi wewe ni sehemu ya hizo baraka nazo bariki Mungu kanisa man nazo. will not be a problem pesa hazitakuwa shida because God will give everything you need maana Mungu atapeana kila kitu unachohitaji but the enemy has lured so many people na Mungu amini adui amezusha watu wengi to to start uh, having lust na kuanza kuwa na tamaa last of things tamaa ya vitu last of money tamaa ya pesa out of that they start using deception language to uh, to receive them na katika hiyo lugha ya uongo inaingia ili wakaweze kupokea matamanio yao they start mixing themselves up so that they can make money wanaanza kujichanganya wenyewe ili watengeze pesa that is very wrong hiyo ni mbaya sana if you serve god with the faithful heart unapomtumikia mungu na moyo wa uaminifu and for sure god knows that you are serving him na kwa kweli kabisa mungu anajua unamtumikia he said he will never leave you nor forsake you amekuahidi hatawahi kukuacha wala kukusahau he will supply your need atapeana mahitaji yako yote amen amina amina according to his riches in glory hallelujah hallelujah God is going to supply your needs. Kwa hivyo kama hilo lilikuwa swali lako, Mungu anaenda kupeana mahitaji yako yote. Na ni kulingana na utajiri wake, sio utajiri wa mwanadamu. Maana mwanadamu kwa utajiri wake atakupatia kulingana na vipimo. Lakini Mungu anapoamua, ataachilia madirisha ya mbinguni, malango ya mbinguni yote yatakaa wazi. Anasema atakubariki mpaka ushindwe mahali pa kuweka. Kile anachotaka Mungu ni uaminifu. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm not preaching. I was only asking a question on your behalf. <laughs> Amen. We thank God. People are really watching and we are blessed. We are blessed. Tumebarikiwa sana. 
na ninajua kwamba hautakosa wakati wote ule unasikia kwamba tuko na topic na kuna topic ambayo iko mbele ninatamania sana sijui ya kwamba ni lini mtumishi wa Mungu ataianza topic ya reversion zim ah natamani sana maana nilionja tuki alinionyesha tu kidogo na nikaona ya kwamba tunastahili kuipokea ili tusirudi huko tutamani kuendelea na kwa wale ambao leo hii wametamani kuwa vyombo vya Mungu ninaamini ya kwamba we are not just testing and seeing how the Lord is good we are testing and remaining there forever haleluya we are testing and remaining and dwelling in the land of the living forever not just telling somebody come and test and live we are not going back hatutarudilia ule ukawaida ule ambao tulikuwa nao tunaenda na tunaenda na nashukuru Mungu kwamba wale ambao wanatizama watu wanabarikiwa kabisa watu wanabarikiwa Nilam Isa anasema kwamba my dear sister we were we were we were lost yeah thank you for bringing us back to the house of God I know when she says we were lost people are lost outside there pastor people are lost and also I wanted to ask you about do anointing vary Upa, uko na viwango kwa sababu umetuambia ya kwamba anybody you can stand hata kama wewe ni mtu wa kufagia hata kama unaosha choo cha nyumba ya Bwana bado hiyo ni kazi you are god's battle axe lakini kuna mambo katika maisha yale ambayo kama ni, ku, ni madhabau yananifuata naweza simama kwa sababu ya madhabau ama ninahitaji kwenda kwa mtumishi wa Mungu na nitoe kiwango fulani cha pesa ili akaweze kunivunjia madhabau how am i going to deal with my family altars man of god is a is god's battle axe nimeona ya kwamba hii mambo inanisumbua kabisa ama inasumbua mtu mahali maana kuna changamoto zile ambazo huwa napitia katikati ya wiki watu wanakuuliza maswali Mary napaswa kutoa pesa ngapi ndiposa nivunje madhabau ama napaswa kusimama namna gani leo tuko hapa kwenye studio zetu tupate kusaidika ya kwamba wewe ni chombo katika hilo boma wewe Mungu amekuita na wewe umetangulia kuona mwangaza umeitwa katika mlima wa Bwana. Maana naposoma Isaiah 25 inaniambia kwamba katika mlima wa Bwana lile pasia nyeusi litaondolewa. Labda limeondolewa kwangu ama nimepata kamwanya kidogo ka kuona mwangaza. Na napoangalia kila ambacho kimetuvunja, kila ambacho kimetufunga ni madhabau ya familia. Mtumishi wa Mungu. Na ninapoangalia huko nje napata ya kwamba madhabau ili yaweze kuvunjika lazima labda nitoe dhabihu maana Gideoni alitoa dhabihu akavunja madhabau na wewe pia tueleze ya kwamba how am i going to deal with family altars or altars in my life any altar be it foreign altar or a family altar how am i going to deal with, with it because many people are lost the way just our sister here have said many people are lost An altar is something that was raised. Madabau ni kitu ambacho kilikuwa kimeinuliwa. With a particular person. Na mtu hasa. And so you find that. Na hivyo unapata kuwa. The people of that generation are made a continuation of it. Watu wa kisasi hicho wakafanya mwendelezo wayo. An altar is a place where the vows are made. Uh, madabau ni mahala ambako um, watu wanafanya viapo. It's a place where covenants are made. Ni mahala ambapo maagano yanafanywa. It's a place where people go and lay their promises and their words. Hapo uh, ndipo mahala watu wanaenda kuweka hadi zao na maneno yao. It is a place where uh, 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 
people meet with God. Ni mahala ambako watu wanakutana na Mungu. And so when we talk about these altars. Hivyo tunapozungumza kuhusu haya madabao. When you you are born again. Ukiwa umezaliwa mara ya pili. You are born into the family of God. Umezaliwa katika jamii ya Mungu. In the family of God there is one altar that has been raised. Katika jamii ya Mungu kuna dabao madabao ama dabao moja ambayo imeinuliwa. The altar of holiness and righteousness. Madhabau ya haki na utakatifu. And upon that altar there is a voice behind it. Na katika madhabau hayo kuna sauti nyuma yake. What I came to realize that evil altars keeps the records. Ah uh, kile nilikuja kutambua kwamba madhabau maofu uwanga yanahifadhi historia. The same the altar of God keeps the record. Na pia hivyo hivyo madhabau Mungu yanaweka historia. So for you to break the old uvunje ile historia. We have so many people who are poor they cannot afford money. Kuna watu wengi sana ni maskini hawawezi kupata pesa. It is not money that breaks the altar. Si pesa ndizo zinazovunja madhabahu. It is not riches that you have. Sio ule utajiri tulionao ndio inavunja madhabahu. How many rich people are in our country but they are still fighting and they are still under the evil altars. Ni watu wangapi tunaowafahamu matajiri katika nchi yetu lakini bado wanangangana na wanapigana na madhabao when you serve the altar you are serving today faithfully unapotumika katika madhabao unayotumika kwayo sasa hivi kwa uaminifu na kutembea kwa haki it is the god of that altar that will fight the altar that is fighting you ni mungu wa madhabao hayo unayotumika kwayo ndio itakayopigana na madhabao yaliyoinuliwa kinyume na wewe so samuel raised an altar kwa hivyo samuel anainua wa madhabahu for the children of israel kwa ajili ya wana wa israel and that altar fought the altar of philistine aha uh-huh. na hayo madhabahu yaliyoinuliwa na samuel yakapigana na madhabahu ya wa philistine so it is the altar of god that you have raised that is powerful to destroy the altar of satan kwa hivyo ni madhabahu ya mungu ambayo umeyainua ndio yana uwezo kupigana na madhabahu ya shetani i have seen people emphasizing on money. Nimeona watu wakisisitiza sana katika kitengo cha pesa. Everybody says give 20,000, give 10,000, give 40,000. Watu wanaweka viwango panda mbegu ya 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000 ili uvunje madhabahu. And people have given this, the, a lot of money but they are still languishing in poverty. Na watu wamepeana kiwango kikubwa cha pesa lakini bado wanatembea kwa ule umaskini. Making those pastors to be rich when they become poor. Wanawafanya wale wachungaji kufanyika matajiri wakati wao wanadumu katika umaskini. They live in good houses and ride good vehicles but they are walking. Oh wanaishi katika zile nyumba za kifahari wanaendesha magari za kifahari lakini bado wako katika yale maisha tu wanaishi It is not sin for a servant of God to ride a, to ride a good vehicle and to live in a good house Okay si dhambi mtu wa Mungu ama mtumishi wa Mungu kuendesha gari nzuri ama kute, uh, kukaa katika nyumba iliyo bora But what I'm saying I'm against is to use the people against the word of god ah, lakini ninachojaribu kusema ni kutumia watu kinyume na neno la mungu to lure them so that they can give money and you go and buy those things on your behalf ah, unawazusha ili watoa unawasukuma watoe pesa ili wende kujinufaisha kwa niaba yao it is sin ni dhambi hiyo so the only thing that i can say something that can break the altar is you to serve God in holiness. Ah uh, kitu tu ninachoweza kusema kinachoweza kukusaidia kuvunja madhabahu kwa maisha yako tembea katika utakatifu na usafi. Serve God with all your heart. Mtumikie Mungu na moyo wako wote. Remain faithful unto God. Salia mwaminifu mpendwa kwa Mungu. That is when God will be the enemy of your enemy. Hapo ndipo Mungu anafanyika adui wa adui. 
adui zako destroy those who wants to destroy you na kuharibu wale wanakusudia kuharibu maisha yako we were all born in the family in the families of witchcraft wote tumezaliwa katika hizi jamii zilizoko na uchawi my family was controlled with the drunkenness uh, jamii yangu hasa ilikuwa inaelekezwa saidi na ulevi and witchcraft na uchawi but the lord delivered us from that altar lakini naye bwana akatukomboa kutoka kwa yale madhabahu when you know the truth unapofahamu ukweli the truth shall set you free from that altar wewe ukweli unaofahamu utakuweka huru na yale madhabahu yaliyoinuliwa you will be free indeed na kisha utakuwa huru kweli kweli so god came to destroy those altars right. mungu alikuja kuvunja hayo madhabahu and we have the power to destroy them na sasa tuko na nguvu ya kuzivunja by the help of the holy spirit kwa msaada wa roho mtakatifu so it is not money kwa hivyo si pesa ieleweke you cannot buy deliverance with your money hauwezi nunua ukombozi na hizo fedha zako because when jesus christ died on the cross mama yesu alipotufia sisi pale msalabani to give us the real deliverance atupatie ukombozi wa kweli there is nothing we gave as panda mbegu hakuna kitu tulipeana sisi kama panda mbegu ndio upate ukombozi we only believed and we received salvation by faith tuliamini tu kwake yesu na tukapokea uokovu kwa imani giving is a reciprocation you appreciate ah ku, kupeana ku toa ni ile uh, dana la shukurani kutoka kwa mioyo zetu tunashukuru we, we can give because we want to buy instruments uh, tunaweza peana tu kwa sababu kanisa linahitaji vyombo we viyombo. can give because we want to support pastor tunaweza kupeana kwa sababu tunataka kumshika mchungaji mkono we can give because we want to extend our church uh, tunaweza peana maana tunataka upanusi wa jengo letu but we should not use that to lure people into giving money because we want to make a lot of money lakini hatuwezi tumia hiyo kama kiege, kiege sio kuwatumia watu ili tupate pesa maana tunataka pesa no hapana amen thanks a lot man of god for shedding light on that that you can be used by god and the same god that is using you is able to break any altar that is standing against you as long as you remain faithful in God's service. Hallelujah. I can see another question here from our sister Candice. This one I have to ask. Our sister is asking why is it that our families break apart to the marriage marriages break apart like marriages and sickness is still and we are praying and have allowed God to use us. How comes there are sicknesses? How comes marriages break? And these people are servants of God. Like uh, I can I can perhaps add on that that you can find even pastor's house is breaking. And this man is serving God. Is there any problem somewhere? Perhaps you need to shed some more light there for our sister to understand. There is no problem there. Mm -hmm. Hapana shida pale. Remember in the book of Genesis when God brought Adam and Eve together and blessed that marriage. Mm -hmm. Nakumbuka katika pale mwanzo Mungu alipomuumba Adamu na Eve na akawaleta pamoja kwa ndoa. And Satan discovered the blessings that were there in. Na mm -hmm. Shetani naye akatambua baraka zilizokuwa katikati ya hii ndoa. He was very angry to see these people living a successful life. Akawa na hasira sana adui kuona watu hawa wanaishi maisha yenye mafanikio. So he came with a weapon of deception. Ivo akaja na silaha ya uongo. And he used one of the partner. Na kutumia moja wapo ya wale wenye ndoa. So that he can get into marriage and disrupt everything that God had purposed these people to enjoy. Ili aingie kwenye ile ndoa yao na aharibu makusudio ya Mungu katika ndoa hiyo. So when the when Satan saw that the first marriage was successful. Satan alipoona kwamba ndoa ya kwanza ilikuwa yenye mafanikio. That is the very day he he declared a warfare upon marriages Hapo ndipo alitangaza vita na ndoa zote So marriages are going through a lot thin and thick Hivyo ndoa yanapitia mambo mengi makubwa na madogo Because it is out of marriage we have a, a, a community 
maana katika hiyo ndoa tunapata jamii it is out of marriage we have a nation hapo katika hilo ndoa tunapata taifa it is out of marriage we have a church the body of christ basi katika hizo ndoa zetu tunapata kanisa ambayo ni mwili wa Kristo so specifically why is satan attacking the house of pastors kwa nini hasa makususana satani anafahamia nyumba za wachungaji because when uh, uh, when when the enemy attacks the shepherd ana adui anapovamia mchungaji the flocks will scatter basi kondoo watatawanyika and he, they, they, they are going to become helpless na wanakosa uh, umuhimu wote so most of the people will say if pastor can go through this what about me na basi shida inatokea kwamba kama mchungaji anaweza pitia haya na mimi je they fail to understand that that is the particular time they need to stand together with the pastor and pray for them hapo ndipo hapo ndipo wanakosa kufahamu kwamba hayo ndio majira wanapaswa kuja pamoja kushikana mikono na kuompa pamoja na mchungaji wao let me say this with joy wacha niseme hii na furaha pastor when pastor starts praying for believers the, the washirika the believers the members of his church wakati mchungaji anaanza kufanya maombi kwa washirika wake waumini wake kanisani all the demons that has been attacking those members they are going to turn against the pastor now basi ufahamu kwamba hayo mapepo ambayo yamekuwa yanavamia washirika wa huyo mchungaji wote wanakuja wanavamia mchungaji kwa ghadhabu kubwa they come so that they can fight her and weaken her so that he should not continue praying for them wanakuja ili wapigane na yeye wamfanye kuwa daifu akose ule uwezo wa kupigana na wao the true marriage has to be tested ndoa ya kweli ni lazima ipimwe for it to be proven ili ikaweze kutibitika that it is the lord who united them kwamba ni mungu ndiye aliwalete pamoja sickness is there magonjwa yako pale so mpendwa that the lord can reveal his power of healing ili mungu adhihirishe nguvu zake za uponyaji mchungaji how will they know that god is a healer when there is no sickness basi watafahamu vipi kwamba mungu ni mponyaji tuki kosa magonjwa katikati yetu you know so many people tend to believe that we should not have problem since we are serving god <laughs> unajua watu wengi sana wanakuja kuwa na wazo kuwa hatopaswi kuwa na shida maana sisi tunamtumikia mungu those problems are there to awaken us so that we can pray and seek god more ah hizo shida ziko pale ili zikafanye kuleta muamsho katikati yetu tukaweze kumuomba mungu na kumtafuta zaidi to show us that we are serving a powerful god ili sasa tukaweze kujua kwamba tunamtumikia Mungu aliye mwenye nguvu sana. Who is capable to deliver us from any scenario? Aliye na uwezo wa kutukomboa kutoka katika jangwa lolote. So my sister that does not mean that God has forsaken you wetu ambaye umetuma huo ujumbe haimaanishi hiyo sasa Mungu amekusahau it shows you that that marriage is in the business of the kingdom and satan is so worried hiyo <laughs> inakuonyesha kwamba hiyo ndoa iko katika biashara ya 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 ya, ya, ufalme. ya ufalme na sasa setani amepatwa wasiwasi sana is using that so that he can weaken you and make you be afraid anatumia hiyo ili akaweze kukufanya daifu na mwenye hofu remain strong because god is with you until the end salia mwenye nguvu maana mungu yuko pamoja na wewe hadi mwisho wa dhari amen hallelujah it is getting hot amen. and i thank god Japokuwa kwenye studio zetu naona anaanza kuarifiwa kuhusu masaa. Lakini nashukuru Mungu ya kwamba watu wanabarikiwa. Amen. People are getting blessed. Na maswali yanaanza kuibuka huku na kule. Na kwa hakika tunabarikiwa. Amen. Mamlea from UK amesema thanks a lot for touching that topic of altar. Hata kama hatujaisungumzia kwa kwa upana, lakini tumeiguzia kuna watu wamebarikiwa na pia kuna mtu amesema hapa thanks a lot sister Mary for asking that question i'm getting blessed thanks a lot my sister and my brother kwa hivyo nataka kumalizia hapa ya kwamba ninashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu na Catherine Mwikali nataka ku kuongelelea kuhusu lile swali ambalo umeuliza lakini litakuwa la mwisho na ninashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu na najua ya kwamba next week on a Wednesday
ninaarifiwa kwenye studio zetu ya kwamba tutakuwa na uwezo wa kupiga simu na tutaongea na wewe live. Tunashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa sababu ya hayo na ninajua kwamba we are growing from one glory to another na tunapokubali kutumika na Mungu na ona tu kila mtu anasema oh god use me i'm ready to be used kila mtu anasema tu i'm ready to be used i'm tuned in i'm ready to be used na ninajua kwamba sasa hivi shetani lazima anashtuka mahali yuko maana kila mtu akikubali kutumika na Mungu yeye atapata nafasi wapi we are not ignorant of your schemes we are empacking ourselves now to be used by God himself. I thank God. Na kuna dada hapa nauliza anasema ya kwamba mwalimu wetu tafadhali. Tunaomba kabisa hivi karibuni utayarishe topic ya ndoto maana tunasumbuka zaidi. Very soon we need we need it. We need to understand more about dreams. Na najua kwamba Kwanza si kwa nimesema ya kwa si kwa nimewaambia kitu. This man of God is a very good teacher. Ni mwalimu wangu. Na ninajua kwamba pia atakuwa mwalimu wako. Na ni mwalimu mkali sana katika mafunzo yake. Kwa hivyo akianza kama ni kufundisha, tutakubali kukaa darasani. Amen. Kama ni kufundisha lazima utaitika kukaa darasani na utakubali kabisa ya kwamba ufundishwe na kiboko kama mwalimu siku hizi tuko digital tafadhali tita atuchapwe tutakusema kwa mami na dadi <laughs> hata kwa serikali tuko na rights na tunashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa hivyo nataka kumalizia hapa ya kwamba dada yetu Catherine anauliza ya kwamba nasikia nimechoka kila kitu najaribu sifanikiwi nimeamua ni mtumikie Mungu. Nashukuru Mungu hajaamua mabaya. Ameamua amtumikie Mungu, lakini hajui nani atamuongoza kujua zaidi. Dada Catherine. Na kama unanitazama uko mahala pazuri. Piga hiyo nambari ambayo unaiona hapo tutakuelekeza na utapata Pastor Harrison, utapata Pastor Mary, utapata Pastor Johnstone na mimi Mungu kwamba hautapotea. Tuko hapa kwa ajili yako. Ama ni nini unaweza ongezea Pastor Harrison mali pale? It is well you have made a good choice. Uh -huh. uh, ni kweli umefanya uamuzi mzuri. Pray that God may bring divine connection with the right people. Uh, uombe kwamba Mungu alete muunganiko wa kiungu na watu walio sawa. Maybe on my side I may say I'm willing to help you but it's not the will of God. Uh, labda mimi pande yangu naweza sema nahisi sana kukusaidia lakini si mapendo ya Mungu. But since you have made that decision God has already prepared somebody. Lakini kwa sababu umefanya maamusi hayo Mungu amemwandaa mtu. Pray that God may connect you with that person son in the spiritual world and in the physical world. Omba kwamba Mungu akunganishe na huyo mtu akusaidie katika hali ya kiroho na katika hali ya, ya hapa duniani. And through that divine connection your life will never be the same again. Na katika huo muunganiko maisha yako mpendwa haitasalia sawia. Amen. 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 Kwa hivyo kufikia pale naona maswali ni mengi lakini hatutaendelea kwa sababu ya wakati ule ambao tumepewa kwenye studio zetu tutaendelea siku nyingine siku ya Wednesday ama hapa katikati wakitupangia pia shote na tutafurahi na tutashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu lakini lile jambo ambalo ninafurahia ni ya kwamba next week unaweza piga simu wacha kuuliza tu swali unaweza piga simu na utatusikia vizuri kabisa tukiongea na wewe tukiwa kwenye studio zetu na utaulizwa utauliza swali lolote ambalo uko nalo na Mungu ataweza kukubariki na kufikia pale najua kwamba kila mmoja wetu amekubali kuwa chombo lakini lazima tukuelekeze katika maombi maana kuna maombi ya kujikubali na wewe mwenyewe ukiri na kinywa chako na uamini na moyo wako ya kwamba huyu Kristo amekuja kukufanya wewe kuwa chombo cha kutumika. Maana yeye alitumika kwa miaka mitatu na vile mtumishi wa Mungu ametuambia alisema ali, alipokuwa anaondoka alituambia kwamba nimefanya mambo lakini nyinyi mtafanya zaidi ya hata yale nimefanya. 
Kwa hivyo Yesu Kristo akiwa anatuombea mbele za Mwenyezi Mungu na roho wake akiwa anafanya kazi ndani mwetu anatamania sana kuona tukifanya yale ambayo yeye mwenyewe hakufanya. Na kwa hivyo tunataka tukuelekeze katika maombi tutaanza na mtumishi wa Mungu Pastor Johnston ataweza kutuombea kisha baadaye mtumishi wa Mungu atatuombea na nitamalizia kwa neno la neema na Mungu ataweza kutubariki. Karibu Pastor Johnston. Amen. Amen. Asante sana mchungaji Mary tunapoomba uh, ningependa pia kusema jambo kabla tumalize na maombi. Uh, kukua kwetu hapa kumegarimu mtu. Kuna mtu amegaramika kuwa kwetu hapa. Na kwa vile kuna mtu amegaramika kwa kwetu hapa nawe unahisi una, una ndani ya moyo wako si kwamba tunakulazimisha lakini unasikia kama unahitaji kusimama na kazi hii ambayo tunaifanya hapa sisi tunakukaribisha sana tushike mkono nambari zetu ziko hapo unaweza piga hiyo nambari unaweza tuma support yako ili usaidie mchungaji Maria kuendeza kazi hii katika studio hizi na bila shaka Bwana atakubariki Mungu tunakushukuru kwa sababu ya neema hii umeiachelea umemtumia mtumishi wako katika njia ya kipekee na bila shaka kuna watu wamebarikiwa pale nje nasi hapa tumebarikiwa tunauliza kwa neema hii watu wako wakafikiwe maombi yao yakasikizwe nawe kilio chao bwana kikakufikilie uwapanguze machozi kama vile neno lako linatuahidi Asante Bwana maana unatuahidi kwamba watu wako wanapokukimbilia wewe wanakuwa salama na jina lako ni ngome imara wenye haki wanapokimbilia Bwana wanapata usalama wao katika jina la Yesu ninatangaza kwamba wasikilizaji wetu na watasamazi wetu wanakuwa salama mahala walipo maana wamefanya maamusi ya kufuatilia injili hii injili ya kweli ambayo imekuja na kweli yako Asante Bwana wa majeshi kwa sababu ya vituo hivi. Tunaomba Mungu kuimarishwa kwa vituo hivi. Tunaomba Bwana uweze kutupanua zaidi na kupatia masaa yaliyo bora kwa sababu ya kuwafikia watu wako. Bwana tunakushukuru kwa sababu ya mchungaji Harrison, asante kwa mchungaji Maria, asante kwa sababu yangu, asante kwa sababu ya fundi wa mitambo wote ambao wametunganisha na kutuweka katika hewa. Bwana ninatangaza usalama juu yao juma hili kwamba wanapotembea wanatembea katika njia zako na wataona mkono wako ukiwa juu yao, utawapigania vita vyao, tena si wao watapigana katika jina la Yesu. Asante kwa sababu ya wote ambao wametufuata Lia. Bwana tunaamini maisha yao kuwa na mgeuko mpya na Bwana waliokuwa napotea wanaanza kupata njia nzuri maana ukweli huu unafika katika mioyo zao ni kwa jina la Yesu tunaomba na hata kuamini Amen Father in the name of Jesus you are so great and you are so faithful you have been so good in our life oh Lord so many people are tired outside there so many people are walking with a lot of burden. But my father, I know you are able to deliver them further from that condition. To save them further from that situation. That yoke of Babylon. That yoke of sickness. That yoke of hopelessness, my father. The yoke that is oppressing that marriage. The yoke that is oppressing those children, my father. Lord, we break that yoke. We break the yoke of sickness. We break the yoke of poverty. We break the yoke of shame. We break the yoke of fear. Every spirit that has been oppressing the people of God. My father, we bring it to nothing. We declare freedom, my father. I release the anointing of healing. I release the anointing of restoration. I release the anointing of power. My father, my God. Those people who have been under the bondage, my father. They didn't know that they are a weapon. They didn't know that they have been, they have been used by God to bring the good news to their family. My father, my God, may you enlighten their spiritual eyes. May you enlighten their family with the gospel of the truth, my father, that they may be able to be used by you to bring salvation, to bring restoration and deliverance upon their community. In the name of Jesus. Father, we have people who have been trusting and believing in deception. Lord, I pray that through this word, O oh Lord, we break the spirit of deception. We break the altars of deception. 
every confusion, every power of deception. I break your chains now. I break your altars now. We break your confusion now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the demons that has been conning people, my Father, my God, we break those altars. We destroy those lies. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, set your people free. The people who have been believing in lies, may they accept the truth. May your truth set them free. In the name of Jesus, we declare freedom. We declare the acceptance of your word that they may be delivered in the name of Jesus. Father, we have the people who are going through a lot in their marriages. We pray for the marriages. We pray for the marriages of servants of God. We pray for the marriages of ministers of the gospel. That wherever they are, their marriages are protected. Their marriages are surrounded. Their children are safe. Their children are safe. Their families are protected. In the name of Jesus Christ, every weapon against them, Lord, we scatter it right now. Every weapon against their children, we dismantle it now. Every sickness upon them, we dismantle it now. Every accident, we dismantle it now. Every spirit of struggling, we dismantle it now. Every demons of hindrance, we dismantle it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, give them victory to overpower every chain, to overcome every struggle. In the name of Jesus, thank you because you are able and you are going to give us a victory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, because you are able to to do more than exceedingly. May your will be done, O King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I do pray and believe. Amen. Everlasting Father, we say thank you. Thank you for this far you have brought us in this studio. Thanks a lot, my Father. Thank you for your great doings. You have done it again, God. You have given one hope. You have given one encouragement. You have given one victory. You have given us, oh God, power. Yes, Lord, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, you deserve, you deserve our worship tonight, Lord. You deserve it, Jesus. You are the great I am. Thank you, Lord, for breaking that yoke. Thank you, Jesus, for losing that person. Thank you, Lord, for anointing that man. Thank you, Lord, for anointing that woman. Thank you, Lord, for accomplishing your work in the lives of your people tonight. Let your will be done. Father, I want to say thank you because of our sister who has a case in court. My God, my Savior. Your name, Jesus Christ, is called Emmanuel, God with us. May you, God, go with her in that court. May you go with her. Stand with her, God. Speak on her behalf. Speak, oh my Father. Say something, Jehovah God. For your word say we shall be accused, but it's you to speak on our behalf. May she allow you, God, to settle that case. May she allow you, Jehovah, to settle that case for her in the name of Jesus. Father, I want to say thank you for every viewer who have spent a lot of time watching us, Jehovah, who has spent their bundles, their money watching us, Jehovah. It is not in vain. 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 You are going to meet their desires. You are going to uh, de supply their needs in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the great God. Father, we say thank you because you're giving peace to those who are lacking peace. You're giving wisdom to them that, that need wisdom. You're giving knowledge to them that need knowledge. My Father, usiacha watoto wako wangamie. Katika dunia amba imeja uovu. Eka roho yako ndani yao. May they feel the conviction of your Holy Spirit in them. Ya kwamba baba kuna njia inayoonekana machoni pao kuwa ni nzuri lakini mwisho wake ni uharibifu. Daudi akasema nichunguze Bwana. 
uone kama kuna chochote kinachoweza kuleta kilio ama majuto ndani yangu na Bwana uniongoze katika njia ya haki lead your people god in the right way lead your people father in the right worship lead your people god in the right altar so that they may know you father we say thank you tunakushukuru baba umenikutanisha na watu walio na shida nyingi nimesimama mbele yao bwana nimesimama mbele ya watu walio fura na matumbo nimesimama mbele ya watu walio gonjeka migongo nimesimama mbele ya watu walio tasa nimesimama mbele ya watu walio wadhaifu mungu wangu i have seen your power working nimeona nguvu yako nimeona baba ukiamsha watu nimeona ukiponya magonjwa bure baba niliona ukiponya bure kupitia kwa damu yako Mungu naomba ukawaguze guza mioyo watu wako wacha Mungu akutumainie wewe wacha watumainie maandiko wacha waangalie Biblia na waseme ya kwamba kuna Mungu aishie aliandika haya maneno na baba kwetu sisi kama watumishi tusitumie neema yako bure Tusitumie neema yako bure. Tusitumie neema yako kama license ya kujitajirisha. E Mungu tusamee. E Mungu tusamee. E Mungu tusamee. Nimewahi chukua neema yako. Nikaichukua Jehova na kuikatia license Jehova ya kujinufaisha katika maisha yangu. Ya kwamba nitakapombea wagonjwa, nitatajirika Mungu nisamee. Mungu ni same. May we not your use your grace God for granted. He Mungu wa majeshi, unasema ya kwamba itakuwaje kwa yule mtu aliyetumia jina la Mungu bure, atalipishiwa namna gani? Kwa yule anayetumia neema yako bure, kwa yule anayetumia damu yako ambayo baba ilifanyiwa agano. He, he Mungu, tusamee baba. Tusamee kama watumishi wako maana tunasimama katika madhabahu yenye haki madhabahu kama shilo madhabahu yanayonena yanayovunja nira za utasa kama vile ulivyomtendea ana Mungu wangu acha ukatusamee na utukubali tena tutumike kama vyombo vyako katika kweli na katika haki tukawe msaada kwa wenzetu kutupaka baba haitupati garantii ya kusema kwamba tunaweza jivuna kukuliko wewe Mungu naye tutumia. Tunasema ni asante Bwana. Asante kwa wanao ambao wametusikia jioni ya leo na wanaochukua atua baba kama dada yetu Catherine ya kwamba anataka kutumika na wewe. Mungu muongoze, kapate kumuongoza baba, apate watu watakao musaidia na pia ukimleta kwetu wacha tuwe na uwezo wa kumsaidia. Asante Mungu wetu. Maana tuko na matamanio ya kusaidia watoto wako ili wakaweze kuona ufalme wasikose katika ufalme tusikose katika ufalme ujao maana hayo ndio maisha tulio nayo marefu kuliko maisha tunayoishi leo asante Mungu wetu pokea utukufu na ukapokea heshima maana najua kwamba Mungu unaenda kututayarisha tena kwa ajili ya kuandaa watoto wako kuja Asante Mungu wa majeshi. Asante baba yetu. Ili unapotupokea kwa utukufu, wacha tupokelewe kwa furaha ya kwamba baba tumepigana vita vizuri na tumemaliza mwendo salama. Tuseme kama Paulo siku moja ya kwamba hakika mwendo huu tumeumaliza vizuri. Asante Mungu wetu. Asante Bwana ya kututumia kwa utukufu wa jina lako winuliwe na hata ukapate kuabudiwa ni kwa maana wewe ni mwema na ni kwa jina la Yesu Kristo tunaomba na hata kushukuru amen. sema amen sema amen tunamshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kufikia pale hatuna budi kusema Mungu ni mwema na kuna dada ametuma ujumbe anasema ya kwamba Bwana Yesu asifiwe dada Mary nina furaha kweli kweli kwa sababu Mungu amenitendea miujiza kupitia kwako kuniombea nikapona kichwa shukurani sana Mungu akaweze kukubariki kwa hivyo najua kwamba watu wengi wanapokea kuna miujiza hata zaidi ya hizi 
na kuna miujiza zile ambazo tayari tena bado zikuja na dada pia ukaendelea kupokea na kupokea zaidi haleluya bwana mungu aweze kukuabariki kwa studio zetu umekuwa nasi tumekuwa na pastor johnston tumekuwa na pastor harrison I've been your host sister Mary Nyokonyo you can call me pastor Mary Nyokonyo may God bless you bless you till we meet again shalom shalom hallelujah amen and now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen god bless you hallelujah